Hey everybody, got a quick one here for you. Been making a lot of cables recently for prototyping for the eyeball mechanism and for the organ and for several other projects. Uh, so I've been making a lot of, of wires and a lot of these you can get prefab, particularly the one I'm about to make now, actually. Uh, so these little guys here are called DuPont connectors and they are, they fit into a breadboard. They are the same spacing as most things you're gonna get for uh, maker level. And when I first started doing this, I couldn't actually find a good video on how to crimp them up. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that right quick. First thing we're going to need is wire. And we're also going to need some uh, pins and the, yeah, they grab those. There we go. Housings. Uh, the housings for the female pins and for the male pins are the same. So when you, the same. The same thing applies. So, first thing is how far to strip them down. And what I do for that one with my particular uh, cutters right here is looking right down this plane of the cutter, I want to just see wire past that. I'm going to start out just doing one side of these because I kind of cut them to semi random length and I want to make sure that they're all the same length at the end. So I'm going to get one side of these in and then uh, and then cut it through the other half. So uh, we will make this uh, an extension cord for one of my, actually let's do female to female. These are the male pins. Male pins are actually a little easier because once you get them into the housing, you can pull them by the male part and uh, yank them in. Whereas the female ones, you have to more gently coerce. Uh, there's no metaphor in there unless you really want to read one in. Okay. The first video I saw on these uh, had the guy really clumsily trying to hold everything together and then real quick crimp it down. Uh, that's just a mistake. So if we look at these guys right here, it's got these little teeth on one side and those are gonna crimp that around on the, uh, uh, in the insulation. Uh, these guys are gonna crimp the insulation and then these little bits right in pointer uh, right in here are what's going to bite around what you just stripped out and make your good connection so we're going to take the teeth side and on the crimpers see if I can get a good on that one you probably can't quite make out here but this plate the the cavity over here is a little smaller than this plate over here because they're crimping different things so we're gonna get that guy in there with the teeth down we're gonna kind of slot it over to the left here so you can feel those teeth engage and then we're going to gently partially close the, the crimpers. These have like a ratchet on them. So on this particular brand, which is the Eames? There we go. Um, it's four clicks. Uh, I would have two pairs of these. They're the only ones I've used, so they're the only ones I can really talk to you about. Then we're gonna take our wire and we just stripped. We're going to feed that into uh, we're going to feed that in there uh, and you can kind of push it in and you'll be able to feel where the insulation you stripped off, uh, the, actually the insulation that you didn't strip off is kind of starting to engage with, uh, with this and it's not really going to go in any farther and then crimp it down. And there he is. Let's do this three or four times. And my white wire here is a little thinner in the insulation, so that can actually sometimes feed too far. So, better than that. All right, now, this is something I find, again, these are the only crimpers I've used, so maybe this is just a, an awkward thing of this, but particularly with the uh, female connectors, this little bit right here doesn't squish in far enough to feed into the housing. I'm going to take my little needle nose, and before I feed those in, I'm just going to give it a gentle squeeze to kind of square up that crimp and make it fit better into the square hole I'm about to feed it into. Uh, on the bodies here, you can see there's a little bit of an arrow on one side. This is so if you're doing a bunch of these, it helps you make them more consistently. Uh, for my purposes, I'm going to make that arrow, the one pin, my white, which is usually a signal wire. Middle is going to be my red wire. 
And this is the same uh, configuration that servos use and a lot of uh, sensor stuff, prefab, also my Fesses use. So we'll get that in there. And once you get it in, you can kind of feel it click a little bit. And then those are in there because there's these little tabs. Little tabs on here. Make a primer that a little bit. Uh, you can see that little tab on there uh, that's going to engage with the back of the uh, of the pin. Um, it's a good idea to twist or braid your uh, your connectors, uh, keep them orderly, and also help with signal. Recently, I found that I prefer braiding to twisting, just because I, I find it faster. It's even faster still if I clip the, the housing into my uh, my soldering station, but I put that back, so we'll just do this by hand. Right, so I'll just kind of wash rinse for piece. Trim these all the same length. Voila, that's it. Once again, no, no outro. Okay, actually I do have an outro for this one. Uh, the one I just made here, uh, you can buy those prefabbed. It's, these are really common. Sometimes you might need a longer one or whatever, but um, yeah, if you can find them prefab, just do that because uh, even as quick as this is, this is faster. And I was really happy when I found that out. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you can.